This is Tracy here to recap Married to Medicine Season 4, Episode 6, which was entitled It's My Prom and I'll Throw Down If I Want To. So the show opens with Dr. Heavenly getting some workout tips from her daughter. Is her name Leah? Laura, Laura from her daughter Laura. And so then it moves on to Dr. Simone and Dr. Jackie and they are having lunch and they're discussing the shenanigans that went down at Dr. Jackie's um, lookbook photo session that took place on the episode the week before. And of course, you know, Dr. Jackie was hurt because she had put a lot into uh, putting together that photo shoot and the girls got to arguing and just totally disrupted the whole atmosphere like they always do. And so the conversation um, turns to the dynamics of the friendship within the, the bigger group of them together and um, you know it becomes apparent that Dr. Simone kind of had a, has an issue with the fact that um, Lisa and Mariah have formed a friendship and so um, you know she starts to blame Mariah for Lisa Nicole changing her mind about um, actually participating in the photo shoot, you know, which was one thing that was kind of strange because Dr. Jackie, you know, she came out and the purpose of the lookbook was to show women who had been through um, breast cancer and survived it and, you know, their scars from having like the double mastectomies and all of that. And then having a juxtaposition of women who um, have not had breast cancer, but have been very supportive of their friends who and family who've gone through it. And then when they got there, you know, people were changing their minds and saying that, you know, they didn't want to expose themselves or be naked on camera and that type of thing. And I think that was, that coupled with the arguing is what really pissed Jackie off at the um, photo shoot. So back at the office, um, Dr. Jackie, you know, she has a scheduled appointment with Lisa Nicole and with Darren to discuss the results of um, the test that she's run. And Darren doesn't show up, you know, which is really embarrassing for Lisa Nicole. And so Jackie tells um, Lisa that her eggs are good and that, you know, she shouldn't have any problem conceiving and that Darren's um, sperm is actually kind of supercharged and whereas they needed him to be at about 20 million sperm per ejaculation, I think, he was up to like 140 million, which um, whoever Darren paid to donate that sperm to him, because you, you remember when they went to the clinic, he made Lisa stay in the car and wouldn't let her go in. So I'm thinking Darren had some sperm somewhere on him or he went into that clinic and um, asked some people to switch some sperm because uh, whosever sperm he's using is probably some 20 year old. And so Jackie, you know, she's talking to Lisa and she's asking Lisa if she's sure that the reason she's trying to get pregnant um, is because she really wants to have a baby and not because she thinks it's going to save her marriage or bring her and Darren closer together. And although Lisa is talking like um, the reason she's doing it is because her and Darren are happier when she's pregnant and once she has a baby, she assures Jackie that that is not the reason why she wants to get pregnant. So next we move on to Toya and Dr. Eugene. And so despite all their financial issues, um, Toya um, still wants to have a grand birthday party um, because it's her 40th birthday party. And she says it's a milestone and that they have got to celebrate her birthday. But Dr. Eugene, you know, he's working like a slave, barely has any time off for rest or for his family. And, you know, he wants Toya to stay focused and that um, being her 40th birthday doesn't take away from the fact that they owe, you know, almost $200,000 to the IRS and that they need to be cutting back. And he even tells Toya that um, when his birthday comes around that she is not to do anything um, for his birthday. But, you know, Toya is looking at him like he's crazy and she doesn't know what he's talking about. So Lisa Nicole is back home and Darren comes in and so, you know, she lets him know that she was upset about him not um, coming to the doctor's appointment and Darren, you know, he doesn't hold any punches. He lets her know that um, 
right off the bat that he didn't come because he didn't want to come and he doesn't want to be a part of all that. And then he tells her um, that doctors, you know, they don't make good patients. And so I guess, you know, him being in there with Dr. Jackie, he may have disagreed with something she had to say. I don't know where Darren was going with that. And so it doesn't even matter because he's so full of crap. And so Lisa, um, you know, she's trying to punish Darren by pretending like, you know, the results weren't good. And so she tells him that, you know, there was a problem with his sperm count and that he needed to have a million sperm per ejaculation, but he only had like 500,000. And so Darren is sitting there, you know, looking all shocked and surprised because he thought that, you know, whatever sperm he presented was going to be really good. And you can see the wheels turning in his head um, that he needs to go back and get his money back from whoever he paid for the sperm that he donated. And so, you know, Lisa thinks he's squirming in his seat because, you know, he's feeling inadequate and like, you know, he's the problem that she may not be able to, um, conceive but then she lets him know that she was only joking and so you know Darren relaxes but again I don't think he was relaxing relaxing for the reasons that Lisa Nicole thought that he was relaxing so over to um Dr. Simone's and guys I don't know about you all but remember when the season first started and she announced that um they had the two houses and she was staying at the original house and then he had bought this house um with some money that he had gotten from um, some investments in California or something. I can't remember what the story was, but it was a smaller house. Well, it seems to me like now Dr. Simone is never at the original house that she's always at the smaller house. So were they really just downsizing and she didn't want to admit that they were downsizing or do they still have the original house? I just want to throw that in there that that was something that was uh, coming across a little sketchy for me. But anyway, um, this is the scene where Dr. Simone shares with Cecil that she's gotten a phone call from her uncle, I think it was, and that he let her know that there was a body that was found and that they, although they haven't tentatively identified the body, they do believe that it is her father's because it had, the body was badly decomposed, but it had his um, ID in the pocket. And so, you know, she's, you know, upset about that, of course, you know, because she thinks her father's dead. But I really, and it's kind of hard to say because she seems like she's like trying to fight what she, you know, fight her feelings and hold back from crying because Cecil seemed more devastated than Simone did. And then I got to thinking like maybe she doesn't want to overreact for the cameras because if you recall, if any of you watch Real Housewives of Orange County, when um, Vicki Grundelson's mom passed away, you know, during the taping of the show, she was just so far out in left field with her reaction to the news. And it was so dramatic that people were really questioning the sincerity. So I guess in these situations, the people, you know, who are actually going through um, the devastating event, they can't win for losing because we either think that they're not as emotional as we think they should be, or they're overly emotional and then we're questioning the sincerity of the emotion. So I don't know, it's a really hard situation. And then one other thing I want to point out, because I had actually addressed the fact that on the after the episode where Simone Jackie and Quad had went looking for her father that I had found out, you know, after I did the video that her father um, had actually passed away and that they had found his body um, in that abandoned house. And I didn't point this out at the time, but when I was doing like the Google search to, you know, to verify that he really had passed away, I noticed that a lot of the, um, like the funeral home website and the legacy.com, which is like a global um, site where obituaries are posted, you know, that appear in the online edition of your local newspapers. All of those have been pretty much scrubbed of information about um, Simone's dad. And I was thinking then like, that's terrible that I'm sure the network paid for these websites to scrub that information and not give like, it was Simone's dad or give any other family history because all the website was saying was more details or the obituary um, will be posted at a later date. So you know they were trying to hide it from the viewers that he had actually passed away. And I just thought 
Is that really fair to the surviving members of the family who have nothing to do with the show that they couldn't um, have their fathers or their uncle, grandfather, whoever, you know, the relationship is that his obituary couldn't be posted at the time of death because of this show. So let me get off of that and get back to the recap. Um, Dr. Jackie, you know, she's decided to go ahead and, you know, for her and Curtis to get the house in the suburb like he wanted. And so she invites some of the ladies over to help her unpack. And so Dr. Heavenly comes in and she immediately apologizes for her, um, behavior at the lookbook photo shoot and she pretty much blames Lisa Nicole for overreacting and causing the argument and so you know Jackie is looking at her like okay I guess the new Dr. Heavenly didn't last very long because here she is not accepting responsibility for her role you know in what went down and it was so true because all Heavenly had to say was she was sorry and you know that she had hurt Jackie and gotten Jackie upset but she couldn't do it. So it's Jackie, Simone, Quad, Dr. Heavenly, and Gia, is it Janice? Yeah, Janice. So they're at, you know, Dr. Heavenly, um, I'm sorry. So they're at Dr. Jackie's house helping her unpack her, um, her dishes and everything and get the house set up and so they were, you know, joking about how anal Dr. Jackie is because she had like these glasses that kind of like curved to the left. And so she was telling them when they put the glasses in the cabinets that she wanted all the curves, you know, to be in this, be uniform and going in the same direction. And so they, um, I think they, at some point they sit down to talk and then Quad brings up the fact that she's talked to Toya and that, you know, because of their financial situation, Toya has asked her to put on this, um, to put together the 40th birthday party. And so she has, um, she says she's not really doing it for Toya. She's doing it because she understands the pressure that uh, Dr. Eugene is under, you know, with having to work as much as he is to help them pay that bill off. And so um, she asked the ladies, you know, would they all chip in and help? And I think she needed help financially and, you know, manpower to get everything set up. And so she lets them know that they're going to do a uh, back to the prom theme and that she wants everybody to wear the same dress that they wore to their high school prom. And Dr. Heavenly said she couldn't wear her dress because it was too big. <laughs> so I'm thinking, okay, Dr. Heavenly must have been really, really big in high school if the dress is too big from the size that she is now. But anyway, she's so crazy. But all the women, you know, they agreed to um, help out with the party, which I think was nice. And so um, Simone and Quad, you know, they go off to the side and then Simone decides to tell Quad the news about her dad. And so Quad takes it really, really hard. And I don't know if it was more so um, because of the death of Simone's dad, or was it the fact that Quad hasn't really um, dealt with the sudden um, death of her own dad that had happened in the previous, it either happened in the last season or it happened shortly after the, at the end of the last season, but before the reunion for last season. But anyway, they end up going into the bathroom and um, Quad just really breaks down. And at this point, I'm just like, oh my God, am I going to be able um, to hold it together? And then the other ladies can tell that something's going on. So then Dr. Jackie comes into the bathroom and it was just like a really um, powerful and emotional scene to see the three of them um, come together and comforting each other, you know, and so Simone finally does cry, but Quad was just really, really releasing, and then, then Jackie was, you know, she was really sad, and I think she cried too, but she was explaining how when her dad died, they knew his death was coming, but with Quad, it was so unexpected, and then with Simone, you know, they had went looking for her dad, you know, hoping to find him, and now they get the news that he's passed away, so I thought that was a really, um, a really powerful moment for them. So it's the day of the prom, you know, Toya's 40th birthday party, and it's actually held in the gymnasium, and so I got to thinking... Isn't it the homecoming dance that's held in the gymnasium at the high school? But when you have your actual prom, it's usually like at a hotel ballroom or at like a really nice um, event facility. It's not in the gymnasium, but 
they're at a high school gym and they're going to have this party and the ladies, um, not everybody showed up to help out with the decorations, but you know, we're going to leave it at that, you know, because we knew everybody wasn't going to do their part. But I thought it was cute that um, they took everybody's prom pictures from when they were actually in high school and they had them blown up and they put them on um, display, you know, and then they had all like the the decorations that you would see at a um, prom slash homecoming dance, which is what I think um, maybe to save money, that was the route that Quad went. So as they're like kind of reminiscing over their actual prom experience, you know, Raya shares that she was actually stood up for her prom. And I thought that was kind of sad because she was saying her mom had spent all this money, you know, on her gown and for her to get her hair done and everything. And then the guy stood her up. So I think her mom's name is Lucy. And she said, you know, Miss Lucy was very upset about that. And so, you know, Toya's being a diva as usual. So while um, Dr. Eugene is at work, you know, she's getting her hair and makeup done. And, you know, she's just doing the whole glam thing, you know, getting ready for the prom. You know, forget the fact that he may not even be able to come. Or if he does come, he's going to be late because he's at work. And so I swear, you know, as everybody is arriving, I swear I have seen Lisa Nicole in that black sequin gown a time or two. I don't know if it's been like in pictures on the internet or if she's actually worn that gown to other functions in previous seasons on the show, but I know I've seen that gown before. And then Dr. Simone, you know, let's just leave it there. You know, she's still mourning the loss of her father and that's why she had on what she had on. So the most beautiful gown of all was actually on the birthday girl because she had on this hot pink, um, it was like tool and it was just like yards and yards and yards of hot pink tool, you know, that sheer itchy like fabric and it was just laid on top of layer on top of layer on top of layer but I must admit it was a very pretty uh, dress not for a 40 year old maybe for a 16 or 17 year old who was having a princess themed party but um, Toya had it on that's what she wore and it was a cute dress and it really did fit her personality if I was to be honest but then she had on like this Miss Universe crown thing going on it wasn't like a little t era right here it was just like this huge thing that was like really big so anyway um all the men you know they looked nice they had on black tuxedos and then their vests and cummerbunds and all that um were color coordinated with the colors that their wives was wearing so that was really nice and then they had like a scene where they were doing the soul train dance and you know you can never go wrong with the electric slide and the soul train dance and um Lisa Nicole dropped it like a hot and there was questions about whether or not she was going to be able to get back up, but she finally did manage. And then Aiden, you know, he was dancing, you know, doing his Michael Jackson moves. And so, of course, the funness couldn't last forever because for some reason, Dr. Simone decided to be petty betty and decides she wants to throw shade at Lisa Nicole and Mariah's friendship. I'm not sure why... It's bothering her so much that the two of them have formed a friendship, but it is. And maybe I'll have to go back and look at old episodes to see why she's acting the way that she is. And so then they had a scene where Toya got up on the little stage and she wanted everybody to um, give a toast to her. And so Mariah and Carrie, who's not a regular on the show, but she's the, the white lady that's married to a doctor or I think they got divorced actually during the off season. But anyway, she comes on the show every now and then and she's friends with Toya. And so they give these toasts that were more like roast because they're telling Toya that you know she's getting old and she's getting closer to 50 and Toya's like, well, dang, you know, how y'all just gonna come to my party and talk to me, you know, any kind of way. So that was kind of cute. And then for some reason, Toya decided that she thought Lisa Nicole should come up on the stage and give her an apology. And she's like, come on, Lisa, come on, Lisa. And Lisa's like, not now. But Toya wouldn't let it go. So then Lisa decided to be the bigger person and she went up on the stage and she apologized to Toya for the way that Toya talked to her at Mariah's, you know, let's be friends again party that happened like in the first or second episode of the season. And so I thought that was really big of Lisa Nicole. And then, you know, Toya used that as a opening um, for her to apologize to Lisa as well. 
And so that was kind of the end of the camaraderie because then Mariah and um, Simone decide to walk off and have a conversation. And so, of course, as they're talking about, you know, why they're not friends and, you know, and Simone reminds us that, you know, it was actually her that got the other women to vote Mariah off the island and say that Mariah couldn't be a part of the group anymore. But they were trying to be adult about it and they were hashing it out when Toya walks over, and of course when Toya walks over, the first thing she hears is Quad's name. And so she feels like they're talking about Quad. So then Quad comes over to to ask, why are y'all talking about me? And then, you know, her being her normal self, you know, she overreacts and gets all theatrical and dramatical and saying how, you know, keep my name out of your mouth and I'm not a, being a part of this. Don't bring me into this. And she's going on and on and then... Uh, Mariah is like, girl, if you are unbothered, then why are you over here, you know, being all emotional? And so she said, why don't you just twirl away? And so, you know, she does like her little Kenya, you know, when Kenya's like twirl, twirl, twirl. And so Mariah twirls away and then she comes back to the group and then Quad is still, you know, in her theatrics. And then she basically says that she doesn't give a damn about any of the women in the group which I thought was kind of mean spirited, but you know, that's how they operate. You know, one minute they love each other and then the next minute they hate each other. So the show ended, you know, with that declaration by Quad, but we know it doesn't last very long because I think on the previews for the next episode, um, she does have a party for Dr. Greg and she invites all the other women to come to the party. So I guess they all kissed and made up. I really don't have a question for this episode because that wasn't anything really you know it was kind of a mellow episode um I know I'll ask you guys how was your high school prom did you really enjoy it I did not go to my high school prom because by mid-year through my senior year I was pretty much over school and everything that had to do with school so I did go to the prom but if you went to your prom and you want to share your experience uh, go ahead and um Leave it in the comments below and don't forget to rate the video and subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. And once again, you know, I want to thank everybody for helping me get to 100 um, subscribers. And so I did personalize my URL. I was hoping I could make it um, Tracy L. Darity, you know, like my website and all my social media pages. But YouTube said no. So my URL is YouTube.com. Um, backslash a view from Tracy's point. And once again, thanks everybody for subscribing and enjoy your day. Take care. Love you guys. Bye-bye.